What is the worst case of entitlement you've witnessed? I met this girl once through an acquaintance. She apparently came from one of the richest families in her country. She told us a humorous story about how she was shopping at Swarovski for jewelry. The store had a promotion going on where if you spend $700 you get a free pair of crystal studded earbuds. Well, she spent twice that much, so she demanded a second pair of free earbuds. The store employee said that was against the rules, to which she responded with, I could ducking by you and your family bish. She laughed while telling us this cute little anecdote. Had a customer shoulder check me into a wall while I was walking through the store I work at, then tell me that because he knew the owner, I was basically his slave. So, that guy. My mother-in-law, she has recently moved into my basement after a divorce, everyone, including her, saw it coming a mile away. She is in her 40s, and has spent her entire life working as a waitress part-time. You would think a person in this scenario would have developed some inkling of work ethic in her lifetime, but no. She says she can't keep working as a waitress because her feet hurt from standing all day, that's fine, she's getting old, whatever. She just sits there moping all day long because she can't find a job, has she been looking for a job? Nope. I found the perfect job for her though, non-technical call center job, where you sit on your ass all day, only requires a GED and it even pays well. They just opened, so they have over 1500 positions available. I even handed her the application. Her response was, well, aren't you going to fill it out for me? I've never filled out a job application before. Oh, it says here I'll have to work mornings, no, I'm not going to wake up before 9, and I don't want a job where I have to be there before noon which goes on and on until she starts attacking me for trying to control her life, and demands that we show some pity for her, because her life is a complete train wreck. She has zero bills, a free place to live, with all the food she can eat, doesn't lift a ducking finger to help out around the house, doesn't even clean up after herself. She won't watch the kids for us unless we offer to pay her, and even then she just sits them in front of the TV with a dinner of cheetahs and soda. Then she blames us for forcing her to move in with us, when really we were just showing her sympathy by trying to help get her life on track. To show her thanks for everything we've done, she bishes, moans, and tries manipulating my wife and I into doing things for her. It's like living with a ducking 14 year old brat. Then she blames us for forcing her to move in with us. This is when you kick her out. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize living here was an inconvenience. Here's the door. I had the parent of a college student tell me it was my responsibility to see to it that her little snowflake passed my class, and that if he failed, it was my fault. Me, no, it's your little snowflake's fault he failed my class. He does not attend, has not gotten higher than a 40 on any test, has never turned in a paper, and didn't bother with the extra credit. Mother, that's not what he says. Me. Consider that I am a professional with absolutely no reason to lie about your little snowflake. Now consider that he has plenty of reason to lie to you. She told me I had to pass him because she was paying for his education. I sent her to my dean. Snowflake did not return to the university, having passed none of his first semester's classes. I manage one of the last few small family owned restaurants in New York City. Most of our customers are hipster types who somehow think it's cool to dine at this hidden and quirky little restaurant that doesn't advertise itself with big neon letters. Anyways, we had a couple about a month ago who pushed things just a little further by declaring, can we have the bill please, and don't forget to give us a big discount because we're on a first name basis with your boss. They got no discount. My gay uncle has no children. So when he dies his fortune is to be divided among his 8 nieces and nephews. However one of his nephews, my cousin, is also gay, and so strongly feels he should have everything left to him, his house, car, money, etc. Solely because he is gay as well. He is the most entitled brat I've ever come across. Following that logic, I should get the fortune since I am also an uncle. Honestly, the baby boomer generation. Their parents survived the depression and then fought in World War II. When they got back from the war, they taxed themselves and built a really strong middle class. 
and their kids crapped the beds. They were one of the first generations whose parents could afford to send them to college, graduating to a booming economy, where an undergrad degree meant you could probably get a job at a company for life with benefits, afford a home, two cars and two weeks vacation every year. But when they came into power politically and socially, they became greedy, taking all the opportunities they were given for granted, and not seeing the enormous wealth handed to them on a brass platter. Instead when they had kids, they spoiled them with toys and speeches about how their kids were better than burger flippers at McDonald's. They taught their children the importance of material objects and status symbols instead of hard work, then slandered them as entitled for acting as they were raised. They look at Gen X and Y and Millennials or whatever crappy buzzword is vogue, and call them entitled and lazy, meanwhile they're slashing benefits, denigrating the same unions that kept their parents employed, granted some union power has gotten way out of hand, and begrudge the poor a living wage and the help they need to get out of poverty, because they believe the lie that they lifted themselves up by their bootstraps, completely forgetting all the help they got from their own parents. Any time I hear entitlement, I think of the opportunity squandered by the middle class baby boomers, and their blindness to the entitlements they got from their parents. My stepsister used to smash her old cell phones in front of my stepdad and demand a new one. She always got a new one. My sister, who was my eldest sibling would run away from home at 14 years old if she didn't get the $90 jeans that she wanted. My parents being the classic enablers that they are would cave, and as a result of these behaviors, they can now look forward to taking care of her and her kids for the rest of their lives. You think that is enabling? At 15, my school friend ran away from home for a week. He wasn't in school and no one knew where he was. He had moved in with his 34 year old boyfriend. His parents had the 34 year old move in with them to stop their son from running away. A friend of a friend. She is a self-proclaimed philanthropist and humanitarian. She is also a freakin'. The first time I met her was when she joined our group for dinner. She ordered herself dinner and a couple drinks like the rest of us. However, when the bill arrived she decided that due to her lifestyle of anti-consumerism, she should not have to pay for the meal and drinks she ordered. Instead, she instructed a few of us at the table who she had determined to be capitalists to pay for her. The second time she showed up to a house party demanding booze, and left promptly after being informed that she made drink what she brought. I didn't exactly witness this personally, but have heard from friends slash family. A former friend of my mother's used to be a secretary at a law firm. The amount of parents who sue schools for silly things is outrageous. Parents sued for their student getting bad grades. Parents have sued for individualistic consequences for the actions of the child. This one actually needs a little explanation, little Johnny acts out in class, teacher gives him a detention, after warning him twice. Parents say that the teacher singled him out for abuse. School pays parents, fires teacher. If you've ever wondered why entire classes sometimes get punished for the actions of one or a few, well, that can be why. I was in high school talking to some random girl at my table. The conversation was about what we were going to do as adults. She said that she had decided that she was going to make $150,000, because that's what both her parents make and it sounded reasonable to her. I told her that sounded like a lot of money, and I asked her what her career was going to be. She flipped out and started screaming, saying that I was giving her the third degree and that I should mind my own business. Everyone in the classroom started looking at our table, and I just kind of backed away while she was screaming. What do you do for a living? I make $150,000. I work at Target. Two people came in and filled up a whole cart with makeup. They went to check out and got mad when we couldn't let them pay with their food stamp card. They started screaming at us like we could just change our policy to let them buy hundreds of dollars of makeup with a food stamp card. We ended up having to escort them out, and I spent a couple hours putting all that makeup back. It's food. See? Nom 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 nom. I work in a community mental health agency with clients who have mental health and substance abuse issues. I have a client who has been trying to get SSI for years, but keeps getting denied because she doesn't meet criteria for being considered disabled. 
One day she told me, Miss Ethan, I've got to be honest with you. I'm totally bullshitting the system. I could work, I just don't want to. This county is going to pay my bills. She is exactly the kind of client who makes people not want to give any funding to social services. I had a friend in high school whose parents gave her everything. She worked a couple jobs, but either quit or was fired within a couple of months at both. She never had to pay for anything, and if she asked for money to go out and do things, it was given to her. Her parents, especially her mom, who lied to her own husband to protect her daughter over and over, turned a blind eye to her underage drinking and smoking, and didn't say no when she wanted to go to an out-of-state private college several thousand miles away. While she was there, she still got weekly allowances, which she used to buy drugs, smokes and booze. She failed out of four straight semesters, wasting twenty to thirty thousand dollars of her parents' money each semester, before they finally gave up on her and forced her to come home. She went to another year of community college before failing out of that too. Now she hangs around the house all day, applying for menial jobs and getting turned down, because she fails all the drug tests. She does nothing but play video games, smoke like a chimney, get drunk, and complain that her parents don't support her, all while the rest of us have stable jobs and our own places. I know the urge to protect your children and give them everything is strong, but never making them work for a single thing does not build responsible adults, just whiny mooches who don't realize no one is about to hand them the whole world just because they exist. For me it was when I lived with roommates who refused to pay rent. I had a fairly good paying job, I was waiting tables at the time and making really good money, they decided that it was my job to pay for everything for them, rent, food, pot, etc, simply because I could afford it. They had watched too many episodes of the show Friends, and thought that since Chandler paid for Joey all the time, that I should have to pay for them. They came up with every excuse in the book for not getting a job. They would fill out maybe one or two job applications a week, maybe that, on a good productive week. When I finally kicked them out, they said I was a horrible friend for not paying for them, and took it way too personally. They then sent me many harassful emails saying that I should have sold my car to support them, or should have bought cheaper cigarettes, and to budget better so I could afford taking care of them, stupid entitled shit like that. I only sent them one email back, it simply said, I have the money to support you, I just don't want to. They then sent me many abusive emails telling me that I was a horrible friend for not paying for them. They also vandalized my car and let the air out of my tires. They even said that my kicking them out wasn't legal since they were on the lease when I kicked them out. My response was, that since they were on the lease they were legally required to pay rent, which they didn't for 6 months. They threatened to take me to court for kicking them out, and wrote me emails saying that they were going to talk to a lawyer and sue me. I never heard from any lawyers, ever. They were spoiled brats that just expected everything for doing jack shit. I'm sorry, get a ducking job and stop expecting people to take care of you. I'm your friend, not your ATM machine.